morning. I hope everything is going well for you today. I'm so excited to just be sitting down here chatting with you. Um, we're going to do a very unicorn look is a good way of putting it as as we go through um, colors if you're painting the chocolate bar palette. Um, and also too, I'm bringing out the Too Faced Sugar Pop palette. So just to kind of talk through the colors that I'm using. I'm only going to use a couple of shades out of Too Faced Chocolate Bar. I've already gone through with Triple Fudge in my brows. And then the only other shades I'm going to be using out of this palette today are going to be Strawberry Bon Bon and Champagne Truffles. So um, because I really wanted this look to be focused around color, I've been sick of wearing neutrals. And so with the Too Faced Sugar Pop palette, I'm going through with a very purple teal kind of vibe. I'm super excited to share this with you because I've really been enjoying this look for the past couple of days. So if you're looking for comparable shades in your collection, the shades that I'm going to be focusing on today, um, Strawberry Ice, if you have the uh, Becca Prismatic Highlighter in the shade Amethyst, mix it up. It, it works really, really um, well since it's a comparable shade. You want kind of a lilac uh, with a little bit of a pink shift. And I'm going to be mixing it with the Sugared Violet shade, any shimmery purple is going to be amazing. I'm also going to be using Blue Raspberry as a transition. Eek! At first, like when I did it the first time, I was like, am I committing myself to a look that's going to be a little intense for me? But it actually works really well as a transition shade. It's the one way that I really enjoy wearing that shade because I'm not a huge fan of it in my crease, not a huge fan of it on my lids, and I'm definitely not a huge fan of it on my lower lash line. But it really works well with this purple look. And then the um, crease shade that I'm going to focus on is going to be this matte plum shade over here called Blackberry. But I was also thinking about it. If you have the Lorac Pro 2 palette, plum would be awesome. Or if you have the, uh, if you picked up the brand new Urban Decay Naked Heat palette, that plum shade that's on the far right of the palette, I have no idea what it's called, but that deep plummy shade or if you have MAC shadows again you're going to be looking for something that's kind of a just a matte plum cooler toned or if you have the Laura Mercier um, artist palette that would be another great option so let's get into it let's let's do this um, what I'm going to go through and do first is um, take my strawberry bonbon shade from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette and I'm taking this fluffy um, concealer brush from e.l.f. And I'm just going to run this all over my lid area. I really find this look to be a lot more flattering when I have a pink base under it because my skin tone is rather neutral. But when I put cooler tones on my eyes, it can tend to make me look slightly bruised. Not cute at all. So um, I have discovered that wearing pinks and kind of the frostier tones with the um blues and purples and teals really kind of helps it out and i'm also going to warm it up with a blush um that red color that i've been painting for the justice league painting challenge because it it adds just enough warmth where it all is very cohesive and works together so if you're like me and, and kind of struggle with that excellent way that you can make more of your eyeshadow work well for you so then um just because got hooded lids hooded lid problems i'm going to go through with the um, Julep Eyeshadow 101 Cream to Powder Eyeshadow Stick. This is just a boring champagne base. Um, so if you want to amp up the purple shade, because we're going to go with a really deep purple on our lids, um, you can go through with a lilac base or go through with a matte plum or go through with um, uh, like even a pinker base. Um, I'm just using this because I want to pan it for the Justice League Panning Challenge and frankly it's going to be covered up by eyeshadow. So we're good. So I'm just going to run this over my eyelid area. Can I just say, I'm so excited to just be sitting down here chatting because I feel like I have so many videos to film. Um, a Fermu, uh, like glasses review and um, pan that palette update. I have another get ready with me I want to show you that I've been loving from the Too Faced chocolate bar with the sugar pop palette and then I, I, I want to do a what's in my bag because I recently picked up a bag from Fawn Design for my birthday. Love love that bag backpack it's awesome awesome and i've gotten asked a lot of questions already from people that have seen me carry out out in public you know when i pull my wallet out and things like that they're like where'd you find that bag so i thought that might be fun to kind of share with you how i pack it and everything and then i've got a couple other videos too because i mean we've got makeup bag updates and i just feel like trying to get back in the group and my husband got me um a ring light 
for my birthday. And so we're <laughs> yesterday I started filming like the intro to this video and, and um, we were trying to position the light all around the house because there's no room for it here in my bathroom. I mean, there's like a giant mirror in front of me, but um, we were trying to figure out where in the house has the best lighting because honestly the best lighting is in my kitchen, but who wants like an oven in the background? Like seriously. So we haven't quite figured out what we're going to do because I thought about like my dining room, but my dining room is actually kind of dark because we've got a huge tree in the front yard and you know, and then just in my bedroom, there's not a lot of light. And so I just don't know what I'm going to do yet. So we may be just continuing to film in here for a while until I get that all figured out. But I thought, you know, with the, with the, uh, what's in my bag, that might be a nice way to kind of test the waters a little bit, but I don't know if you have a ring light, what is your tip to reduce the glare? If you wear glasses, because that's the one thing where I was kind of like, I like having the light. Um, I've got LED bulbs in the vanity lights above me that are just in here for lighting my bathroom. Um, but I've noticed when I have that ring light in front of my face, I, I can't get rid of the glare on my glasses even though I have anti-glare lenses. So that's gonna get super annoying. I know, <laughs> super annoying. So if you have any tips for that, because I mean, we tried angling it and positioning and, and you know, seeing the, the best we could do to like not wash me out, but at the same time, reduce that glare as much as we humanly could. So I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyways, back to the Too Faced Sugar Pop palette, shall we? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through with the um, e.l.f. It's just a flat shader brush, really, really flat, easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix Strawberry Ice with Sugar Violet just because I really prefer to have the lighter purple all over my lid but if you have deeper set lids than i do or if you have a larger lid space you can always go through with sugared violet and then pop strawberry ice on the center of your lid later but i just noticed like with the hood of my eyes it really benefits me to have a little bit more brightness across my lid to make it look like i have a little bit more mobile lid space so all i'm doing is i'm tapping it on top of that champagne eyeshadow stick because these shadows actually have quite a bit of fallout. Purple eyeshadows in general just tend to be a little bit flakier, I've noticed compared to other shades. And I certainly don't wanna have like that darkened under eye appearance from purple eyeshadow falling all over the place. You know what I mean? So I just tap, 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 go through. I'm gonna do the other side. And honestly, if you have Candied Violet from the uh, Chocolate Bar palette, this would be a really great way to use that shade. I mean, it's it, it comes off a little bit grayer than what these two shadows are doing together, but if you lighten it up, like I said, go through with like if the Becca Prismatic Amethyst Highlighter, it'd be a, a really nice way to kind of make that a little bit more wearable if that's a shade that you're wanting to make some progress on. Cause I was just, I was thinking about that yesterday when I was doing my makeup and I was like, you know what? I should have done this with Candy Violet. Um, I liked the ways that I panned it, but this would have been a cool way to kind of go back through and, and, and uh, enjoy that shade. So the next shade we're gonna go into, I've got this Bare Minerals Flat Shader Brush, go through with whatever uh, flat shader brush is your favorite in your collection. We're gonna go through with Blue Raspberry. This is gonna look a little intense for a hot second, but once the look is put together, it's not going to be so strong. It's not going to be crazy. It is actually going to be quite wearable for every day, even though right now you're going to be like, say what? I'm not going to go out of the house like that anymore, but give it time, give it time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, put this in the crease. And like I said, it's, it's a little strong. <laughs> Not gonna lie, because at first I was like, oh, I've just gotta find a way that I like this color, otherwise I'm gonna have to, you know, use what I want out of the palette and ditch it. Because I mean, I really enjoy this palette now that I've been working with it for the past month with some, you know, intense concentration. See, well, it's not coming off quite as strong on camera, but it's a little intense. <laughs> You can build this color up as as um, 
strong as you want to. I, I tend to build up a little bit more towards the center of my eyes so you get a little bit more of that pop of teal. But once you layer the blackberry shade on it, it really kind of gives a nice um, sheen to the purple and makes it more intense. So just kind of food for thought. So there we go. Strong mermaid eyes today. <laughs> it's been fun though. I also can't wait to show you the really warm look that I've really enjoyed wearing because my goal for this whole month was to kind of go through with creme brulee and make a huge amount of progress on it. But when I discovered that I liked this combination, I decided to go on and, and stick with it for a couple of days because it's helping me to get through champagne truffle. <laughs> like that shade, I, I, I just, I'm, I love it, but I'm over it, but I love it, but I'm really over it. So it's been kind of nice. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that this helps me to finish that shade before the end of July. And then, um, cause my goal is, is probably going to be to go on and continue putting creme brulee in, in August because that shade works really well with so many of the other chocolate bar shades. So I'm not in a hurry to get through it. All I'm doing right now is if you are like me and you like to have a little bit more of an amped up inner corner if you wear glasses, I'm just going through with a NYX white eyeliner and just popping that into my inner corner, but that's not a end all be all step. You don't have to do that if you're if you're not a fan of that. So um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this um, flat shader brush from Sonia Kashuk. I'm gonna run through with some champagne truffle and pop it on top of that uh, white eyeliner and then I'm also going to highlight my brow bone with it. So let's go through. I love how this shades plate covers up the mirror. All right, so just pop that through. But yeah, so I need to film a Pan That Palette update. Um, the what's in my bag, the Fermu glasses because I just got a couple of pairs and I'm in love in love. I really wanted um, some clear frames since those are really trendy right now and I also kind of wanted a pair of really strong gold frames because I'm noticing that I am gravitating more towards more gold jewelry and hardware on my bags and things like that and so I just thought it would be kind of nice to have some glasses that would really anchor that down. Um, on my face instead of just necessarily like my bronze frames that I got from Fermu. I love, I love wearing those with just about anything, but it would be nice to have like a really warm pair of warm gold frames just to kind of tie it all in together. You know what I mean? So, okay. Now that we're going on into the craze, this is kind of what we're working with right now. I think I'm going to clean up a little bit of fallout on my cheeks. Got a little purple eyeshadow for that reason, huh? Okay. Then what we're gonna do is I'm taking this uh, fluffy crease brush from Revlon. I'm gonna go through with the shade Blackberry, or like I said, you can go through with Lorac Pro 2's Plum. That would be another fantastic option. I've really discovered I love that palette as well. Um, honestly, oh, I need to do the um, another palette tag. That's another one that I've been itching because I've been watching all your videos. Love that tag, so I think I might do it. And I realized that the Lorac Pro 2 palette is probably my favorite palette. I didn't know it until I started, you know, kind of thinking about how I would answer those questions, but I think I've discovered my absolute favorite one um, because I've, you know, kind of been steadily, naturally panning several of those shades. And now that I've hit panning quite a bit of them, it's honestly a palette that I would consider repurchasing at some point in the future because I have to admit one of the things that I've really learned about myself is you know you can go through the whole process of, of is it KonMari or KonMari the whole decluttering thing which I've done extensively through my home and and I'm slowly working that direction with my makeup because I do prefer to project paint because I want to make sure that I'm truly um, loving the things and then getting rid of the things that really just aren't working for me. I don't like to make snap judgments about makeup. That's just my personality. And, um, you know, as, as I've panned palettes, especially I've noticed that once I'm done panning the palette, I'm good. Like I, I haven't had a desire to go back and buy a naked palette or a Lorac Pro palette. Stila, I really enjoyed those shades, but I have not, um, really given any thought to the newer, um, 
launch of the the gold packaging that has come out and i kind of feel that way about chocolate bar like i've really I've, I've had a roller coaster with that palette so far it's been mostly positive which has surprised me um but i don't know i i just find that wildly fascinating that it's like once i get through a palette would i repurchase it i don't know like i feel like once i'm i'm done i'm, I'm good like i'm ready to move forward because Maybe it's because I know that there's going to be more out there that's just the same. I don't know. Give me just a second. Okay, we're good. My daughter needed my assistance for a second. So, um, that's, I don't know. Like, how do you feel about this? Like, as you pan products, do you instantly want to go out and repurchase them? Or are you good? Like, once you're done, it's like you've enjoyed your time with it. You've, you've released the power of that thing over you and, and you're just ready to move on. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about this, especially when it comes to your makeup. Like if you've been panning for a long time, do you feel that way about blush? Do you run out and buy a blush that you finished right away or a bronzer? Cause I know I've been that way with blush too. Like, um, I'm, I'm panning another thing of Hula right now from the cheeky sweet spot palette. But the only reason I'm panning it is because I had it. And that's one of my like older, um bronzers in my collection and blush i haven't replaced anything except no and even then i didn't replace it because like when i finished a sample of orgasm and then a full size it's because i already had them in my backup stash before i you know really got into project panning so i don't know comment below because i'm really really intrigued to hear how you feel about these things because um it's it's kind of been something to, that i've given a lot of thought to um especially you know because i do get asked you know would i repurchase these palettes i don't know like i don't know like at this point i'd say no like i'm i'm good but i don't know just random thoughts that cross my mind as i'm doing my makeup in the morning okay anyways getting back on task i really um you know now that we're going with the colorful look i want to go big and as far as liner i'm going to stick with a really strong navy blue liner but you can go with black if you want to you can use a strong um aubergine eyeliner if you like purple um or you can go with a strong uh, charcoal color but i was just figuring i kind of like the ombre effect of having the navy to the purple to the teal to the little bit of a pink shift with champagne truffles so the liner that i'm using is going to be the wet n wild pro line graphic marker eyeliner in the shade airliner blue it's not crazy intense when it goes on the eye but it's just enough that you can see the definition but what i'm going to do is go back through and set it with the um bare mineral shadow that i'm painting for superman because as you can see i mean it's not going to be like a huge difference and in fact this eyeliner can get kind of messy if i'm really going to be candid about this i mean it's it's not a bad formula but if you're not careful and you have small eyelids like i just did it gets all over <laughs> your cheek. Fortunately, it does wipe away quite quickly, but you need to be vigilant as you use this if you have small lid space because it does kind of tend to get all over the place. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Real Techniques eyeliner brush and I'm going to go through with the Bare Mineral shades I chose. I'm picking this really strong navy color and I'm going to go on and set that eyeliner to make sure that I don't have any type of transfer during the day. But again, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Um, and you can go through with any navy shadow in your collection. Like I have another navy shadow in my uh, Bare Minerals kind of stash that's really, really beautiful if you want to go with like a pressed eyeshadow. But I do find this is an awesome way, if you're trying to use up some pigments, liners are a fantastic, fantastic way to kind of step back into the mineral shadows because then you're not having to put them on in a major way where you're worried about tons of fallout and mess all over your counter. Cause let's get real. That's, I know that's why I stepped away from bare minerals for a long time. Cause I just got sick of the mess. But I will say that these little containers that I got, I actually found them at Hobby Lobby. Michael's has them as well. And they have them at um, Walmart. If you're into like jewelry container storage, these are an awesome way to transfer your bare mineral shadows where you have them in more of a um, 
contained place so you don't have a bunch of the little pots that are kind of drifting around in your backup stash or your makeup collection and they do have a handy plastic box that you can store everything in so cannot recommend those enough and it is very very affordable um, storage and then all I do is I go through with the labels from the bare mineral shadows and stick them to the bottom the only thing that's kind of like eh about the storage system is the only one that gets a lid is the top one um, so when you're coming up wow there's a crack in that one that sucks oh well it's not too bad so um, you know as you're going through and making your color combinations like if you want to combine all your highlighting shades together all of your crease shades or if you want to do it by color family um, you want to make sure that you know um, you know that only the top one has a lid because it does I'm like if you're gonna start switching them around all the time you are gonna get a little bit of like color mixed in and all that so I don't touch mine really I just leave them in the, the homes that they're in anyways can we not be more all over the place in this get ready with me shall we all right then what I'm gonna go through and do is uh, brighten up my waterline because looking at how dark this eye look is it's gonna make my eyes look really really small under my glasses so you can go through with a nude eyeliner pencil I hope this isn't creeping you out I know I tend to get a little bit weirded out but um you can go through with a nude pencil or if you have a, a brightening pink pencil that also works really well or just a basic white eyeliner. I mean, for a long time I used just the next Jumbo Eye Pencil in white in my waterline or you can even go, this is on the brain for me because yesterday when I went to the grocery store, they were clearancing out the Revlon um, eyeliners that came out several months ago. There was like a lemony color and like a, a tealy aquamarine and then there was, Maybe a white and something else, that aquamarine shade would be stunning with this look because we're gonna go through with a teal on the lower lash line so then you can kind of have the ombre effect going down. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just, I, I thought about it yesterday. I didn't pick up the eyeliner because I thought I've already got the MAC pencil. I like the brightening effect. We're just gonna work with what I have, but that would be really cool, especially if you're just walking around your grocery store and see it because I know our uh, local grocery stores are clearancing them out and I have not seen them at Target lately, so they must be on the way out the door. So, like I said, teal on the lower lash line. I'm gonna first go through with the L'Oreal Silkissime Liner in True Teal. I love how brightening this is. I'm trying to think what the Urban Decay color that's similar, uh, oh. The eyeshadow version, uh, Deep End, no. Because I keep thinking of like the bright teal from the 15th anniversary palette that came out years ago. I want to say it's the deep end. There's an eyeliner from Urban Decay that's this exact dupe. Really, really pretty. So, just to kind of give you a swatch, you're going to want to go with a really bright eyeliner. All I'm going to do is run this across the outer half of my lower lash line. And then, because I want to get some use... I'm going to set this with the teal shade that I chose to pan for Aquaman because I don't know if it's just my like skin type or whatnot, but if I just wear eyeliner on my lower lash line, it tends to disappear. And if I just wear um, eyeshadow on my lower lash line, it fades. But if I wear them together, they're bulletproof. I don't know, maybe it's just me. You would think. <laughs> Cause even like when it's sweaty and all that, like it's, it's fine. Like I do okay. And it's just kind of a weird thing. So I'm curious if that happens to you as well. Cause that's why I'm all about setting everything because it's kind of annoying if you do your makeup and several hours later you look in the mirror and your eyeliner's gone. So, all right. So just going through with an elf eyeliner brush and I'm going to set this on my lower lash line. And this teal shade is not as intense. But one of the things that I really realized about this color is it's quite sheer. So the bright peacock, oh, of course it is. Okay, we're back. My camera overheated, so I went on and did kind of the majority of the rest of my face because I know bronzer, blush, all that good sort of thing. I'll kind of talk you through it. But first thing is, like, when I went through with bronzer, I went through with the um, backup version I had of Hula. 
just to contour the perimeters of my face. And then what I did is I went through with this very strawberry tone bare mineral shade. If you have the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the shade Natural Beauty, this is a beautiful shade to pair with the strong purples and teals. So I pop that on the cheeks, but I do want to offer you this tip. If you have a fluffy shader brush, I highly recommend that if you struggle to wear purples and teals, take that fluffy shadow brush and dip it into the tiniest little bit of your blush and run it into your crease to blend out the lines. It adds just enough warmth where that eye look is going to be very flattering on your skin tone. It will tone down the bruised look and instead you're really gonna see the focus of your eye color. So if you have brown eyes, if you have green eyes, this is gonna be an amazing combination. If you have blue eyes as well, perfect, perfect, perfect. But definitely brown eyed folks, this is gonna be a look for you, especially if you tone it down a little bit with just the slightest hint of warmth. You don't want it to be super strong, but just enough where you have a little bit of that pinkish hue in your crease area. It's beautiful. Then in terms of highlighting, I went back through Champagne Truffle because like I said, I'd kind of like to see this shadow ended by, actually I'm, I'm pretty close um, from using it as a face highlight and eyeshadow you'll see in Pan That Palette. Um, and then in terms of lips, I kept it super simple. This is the lip that I've wanted to pan for the month of July. So I went through with my MAC lip liner in the shade Whirl, just a boring, everyday, basic, kind of cool toned mauve. It's not as flattering as I'd like on its own. So what I do is I go through with the Maybelline lipstick in the shade Warm Me Up. It's number 235. Together, these make the perfect combination because as you can see, it is definitely, there's more of a pink tone to it, but together in combination, it's the perfect everyday nude lip. It matches with just about anything that I'd possibly want to wear on my eyes or, you know, coordinating clothes and things like that. So it's my perfect everyday nude combination. So have fun with this look. Have a blast shopping your stash. Let me know how it goes because I know uh, going with color is, is kind of out of the box um, because it's, it's just so easy to wear neutrals. And so I hope that you have as much fun with this look as I have. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a very warm toned look coming with the Too Faced Sugar Pop Palette, kind of focusing on bubblegum and macaron in combination with creme brulee and hazelnut actually from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. So the next look will be focused a little bit more on Chocolate Bar because it'll have um, triple fudge, hazelnut, white chocolate, creme brulee, maybe that's it, maybe four shades, I think so. Or you could sub in um, hot chocolate as well if you're not a huge fan of hazelnut. So that's about it. I'm going to take a little bit of a break to let my camera film or cool down. And then I've got, like I said, tons of videos coming. So pan the palette update, a what's in my bag, the next get ready with me. I've got a firm in glasses um, update. I'm kind of debating about doing like a big uh, kind of show and tell because I've actually realize that a lot of the frames that I thought were discontinued, they brought back to the website. So if you're interested in any of the frames I have, um, I'm gonna go on and do style numbers and all that. So I've got a lot to do, a lot to do and a busy schedule on top of it. So I'm gonna try to start getting some of that list knocked out. And then also I wanna do the another palette tag by uh, Kaylee Bote, or no, Katie Bote. <laughs> so I'm super, super excited about it. So take care, have an awesome rest of your day, and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. See ya.